What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today I got a little bit of a mad scientist experiment, and we're going to test some welding hoods and see how well they work at about zero degrees. So let's get into it. So here in the tin shed, I have a TIG torch kind of jankily uh, wired up to this clamp here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to start the TIG arc right to the table and use four welding hoods and determine if they will function when they're cold outside. And what I mean by that is it's about zero degrees outside right now. It's colder than shit as it, it probably is cold by you. And I have four welding hoods in the back of my pickup truck that have been sitting out there for three to four hours while I've been filming other videos and they are unbelievably cold. And I'm gonna bring them in one by one extremely fast Put it in front of the camera and see if they will stay dark when they detect a TIG arc. Now, TIG is a pretty hard arc to pick up for a lot of welding helmets. However, all four of these that we're going to test today, I know for a fact work just fine with TIG. And under these circumstances, they should work fine without any issues, provided the temperature was higher. However, being that there's zero degrees, all sorts of weird, funny things can happen when batteries and electronics get cold. Now, I know for a fact I've owned welding hoods that when it was, you know, zero degrees out that they would flash me where it would stay dark for a second and then go back to, you know, undarkened state. And we don't want that. Now, all welding hoods have a parameter range that there's a specification of the temperatures are supposed to work in. And I have a feeling a lot of them don't say anything about zero degrees, let alone colder. But some of us, guess what, have to weld in that kind of circumstances. Now, we know a fixed shade is a way to go. Like, that's not going to be affected by any temperature, really. But if you only have an auto darkening or maybe you're going to have to do a repair job out in the middle of nowhere and it's colder than shit, guess what? You need to know if it's going to be reliable and trustworthy. And in my experience, the higher end hoods generally work better when it's colder out than the cheaper ones. But hey, in this small test, we're going to find out what the case is on that. So without any further ado, I'm going to go grab an ESOB Sentinel that's on ice, bring it in, and let's test it. All right, here's the ESOB Sentinel. Let's see if it stays dark. Yeah, it has no problem, and that was only a 20 or 30 amp TIG arc, and no problem. <laughs> There's a lot of oil on this table. Probably not the smartest thing to do on there, but no problem. That's a good sign. Here we have the Miller Digital Infinity. Hit the mode button there to make sure it was in the weld mode. Let's see if this will stay dark. No problem at uh, 20, 30 amps TIG, stayed dark. Everything appears to work on this, so that's a good sign. This might be a boring video. Let's go and grab another. A used and abused Lincoln Viking 3350. Let's see if this sucker works. No problem whatsoever. And I know I've used this exact hood down to negative 16, and it still worked by some luck of the draw, I guess. And last but not least, the Chicago Electric. And to give you an idea how cold this stuff is, I don't know if you can see, like just holding on to these is freezing my finger. So, all right, let's see if this little guy works. And shockingly enough, this also works at zero degrees. Now I can tell you from past experience, I tried to use this at about negative 10 
and it almost wouldn't darken. It started to do really weird things, but at zero degrees, you're probably all right with that. So all of these worked despite being super cold, and that's a great sign. And in my personal experience, like I said earlier, the Lincoln Viking at negative 16 with a wind held up just fine, had no issues with it. And I have had issues with cheaper hoods where they kind of start flickering and do weird things. And a lot of that might have to do with the fact the internal batteries start losing enough voltage, especially if they're close to being dead. All of the batteries and all of the hoods I have are pretty recent. So my guess is as your battery gets older and the voltage is already lower to begin with, when you start dealing with the cold, you're gonna run into more problems. So it's probably in your best interest to put fresh batteries in your hood before you try and use it outdoors when it's super cold. And of course, keep it warmer if you can, that will also help. The other thing you guys really gotta worry about with stuff like this is keeping the moisture off of the screen. All of these, I guarantee you if I breathed into them, and I'll do it right now. I don't know if you can see, it basically, frosts up right on there immediately. And guess what? If you do that on the inside and there's enough moisture, you could potentially short out the cartridge internally and that's no good. So you really want to wear something in winter, like a turtleneck, I hate to say it, or some kind of scarf over your face to keep some of that moisture-laden air from just hitting the cartridge inside. Not only will that keep it from fogging up as bad as it wants to, but it'll probably protect it from the freezing water damage that could happen. But yeah, I gotta say, I'm surprised that all of these worked and I'll have to do this again and try it if it ever hits like negative 20 this year because I have almost a guarantee you that something, one of these, more of them will not work at that. I know that won't, but I bet some of the other ones will stop working. So anyways, stay warm, gentlemen. Don't freeze your nuts off. It's colder than shit out. Until next time.